practical investigation. This is part one, and it's called uncertainties in data. Uncertainty in a measurement. First point is, all measurements have some uncertainty or some error. In other words, no measurement is perfect, because no instrument is perfect. In general, the uncertainty in a reading is equal to the smallest scale division. So, for example, if we were to use a thirty centimeter ruler to measure the length of some object, then the uncertainty is the smallest division on that ruler, which is one millimeter. So it says here, hence, its uncertainty is plus or minus one millimeter, or we could write plus or minus point one centimeter. If the length of a pencil measured with this thirty centimeter ruler is eight point two centimeters, then we write eight point two plus or minus point one centimeter. In other words, the true length of the pencil could lie anywhere between eight point one centimeters and eight point three centimeters. And you can see the illustration next page. In general, it is written as x plus or minus delta x, where x is the value. In this case, eight point two. And delta x is the what we call the absolute uncertainty. In this case, is point one. This is a diagram. As you can see, this is part of the ruler, and this is part of the pencil, the tip end of the pencil. And no doubt, the other end of the pencil, further back here. Would line up with the zero mark of the the ruler, and so we take measurement from this end here. You can see that the tip of the pencil lies somewhere around eight point two centimeters. So we say the length of the pencil is eight point two plus or minus point one centimeters. In other words. The measurement must be between eight point one centimeters, and not two. Sorry about a mistake. And eight point three centimeters. Significant figures and uncertainties. An absolute uncertainty, or delta x, is always given to one significant. Figure only, or to one sig fig. This is very, very important. You must remember it. Don't forget it, please. For example, plus or minus zero point four seven grams is to two sig fig. So it has to be rounded to one sig fig point five grams. The value x is then rounded to the same number of Decimal places, as the uncertainty delta x. For example, here, twenty three point five seven plus or minus zero point four seven grams has to be rounded to this form here. In other words, the uncertainty is rounded to one sig fig. That's the first thing you do, and then. You round the value off to the same number of dp's as the uncertainty, since the uncertainty has is to one dp, therefore the value will also have to be to one dp. So we have here twenty three point six one dp plus or minus point five, which is also one dp grams. Here is a list of some measuring instruments. With their respective uncertainty and their respective example. First of all, meter rule or meter ruler. The smallest division on it is 
one millimeter, same as a 30 centimeter ruler. So the uncertainty is 0.1 centimeter, one dp. So the example here is also to one dp, 54.3. You don't write 54.32, for example. Digital stopwatch gives two dps. So the smallest value is 0 0.01. And that becomes the uncertainty. So the example here says 9.85 seconds, 2 dps, 2 dps. A thermometer has half degree marks on it, so the uncertainty is plus or minus half a degree. The example is 67.5 degrees. You never write 67.4 degrees. Electronic or digital balance for measuring masses also gives two TPs, same as stopwatch. So here is example, 4.03, two TPs. A protractor gives to the nearest degree, so plus or minus one degree. So the example here is 39 degrees to the nearest degree. Both the digital ammeter and digital voltmeter give two dps same as the balance and the stopwatch so these are the two examples both to two dps absolute and percentage uncertainties an absolute uncertainty can also be expressed as a percentage uncertainty so you have to know how to convert an absolute uncertainty to a percentage uncertainty. For example here we have 23.57 plus or minus 0 0.67 grams. You'll notice here by the way the uncertainty is to two sig figs not one sig fig. That is because this is still part of the calculations not the final answer yet. Only the final answer has its uncertainty to one sig fig. So we'll continue on. It says here, the uncertainty or the absolute uncertainty can be expressed as a percentage of the value. Percentage uncertainty is equal to, here's the calculation, 0.67, which is the absolute uncertainty from here, divided by the value from here times 100. And here is the percentage sign. And all that will come up to be 2.84%. Note, percentage uncertainties can be expressed to two or three sig figs. In this case here is three sig figs. Doesn't have to be two, one sig fig. So, it can be written as 23.57 plus or minus 2.84%. A technique to improve accuracy and this technique is repeat measurements and take average. When you improve the accuracy then you reduce the uncertainty. Example here we've got is the stopwatch reading is repeated six times and the following measurements are recorded and this is for timing a ball rolling down a slope and these are the six times and we work out the average time to find out the average you add them all up and then you divide by six because there are six of them and the average is 4.93 three sig figs why because all the raw data are to three sig fig and this 4.93 the average value is called the calculated data and the calculated data cannot be more accurate than the raw data so that's the value now the uncertainty to calculate uncertainty you have the range of these values here the range is 0 0.06 why 0.06 it's a difference between the biggest value, which is 4.96, and the 
and the smallest value, 4.9, so it's 0 0.06, and you halve that, halve the range. Half of 0 0.06 is 0 0.03 seconds. So now we can write the time taken by the ball to roll down the slope is equal to 4.93 plus or minus 0.03 seconds. Notice the uncertainty is to one sixth thick, and both the value and the uncertainty are to two, are to two dPs. Here. Another technique to improve accuracy, and that is to take a multiple measurement. I've got two examples. This is example one. Example two is on the next page. This example here says the mass of 27 identical washers was measured to be 111.7 plus or minus 0.1 grams. Calculate the mass of one washer. First of all, the average mass of one washer is simply dividing the total mass by 27 and you get 4.13704 leave it at that don't start rounding it so that's the average value now the uncertainty we just divide this uncertainty here by 27 as well and you get that 0 0.004 one sec thick don't forget for uncertainty so now we can put both together and we can say the mass of one washer is equal to that which is from here plus or minus that which is from here grams and the important thing is rounding off the mass to the same dp as the uncertainty the uncertainty is to 3 dp so it should be 3 dp here i made a mistake so that's the correct answer. 4.137 plus or minus 0.004 grams. Example 2. Here we have a ruler. Up against which we have four steel balls lined up in a straight line. And the total diameter across all the four balls is measured and that's a measurement value plus uncertainty and to calculate the diameter of one steel ball we simply simply divide both the value and the uncertainty by four as is shown here and it comes out to be 1.30 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters one sig fig for uncertainty and both are to 2 dps plotting uncertainties on a graph how can you plot uncertainties on a graph well it says instead of plotting a point on a graph normally with a cross like this you plot a bar here we have an X bar and a Y bar. So instead of plotting a point, you plot a, you plot a range. That's a range. That's a range. Minimum, maximum. Minimum, maximum. And when you put X and Y bar together, they look something like that, with two bars crisscrossed. And this point here is picked as an example. The values are given here. So X has got its own uncertainty and Y has got its own uncertainty. 